Hello EFD squad and welcome back to We Are You, you Dirty Dogs, where we look at the winners and losers from the match day just passed. I was going to say you pick our winners and losers, but that's not really returning that function until there's more than one league. So we're being greedy. We're picking them. And this week, of course, I'm joined by Patrick Van Straten. How are you, sir? Uh, I'm good, man. I'm good. Enjoying the sun. How about you? Yeah, me too. Have you noticed that I'm a slightly different shade? pink i look like a snooker player before like a vampire i've actually been outside this last week having had a week off your, it was glorious your hands look brown but your face looks a little pink now i just look like ricky bobby in talladega nights where i'm just like I, I don't know what to do with my hands anyway um let's move on to german football because i did digest a lot of it and we're starting with a game that i that i enjoyed actually and Bear Leverkusen came out on top. Yeah, though it probably was their least eventful game so far, I'd say. Obviously, in midweek, Leverkusen lost 4-1 to Wolfsburg, but they recovered from that with a 1-0 away win over Freiburg, putting them level on points with Gladbach in third, though they're still 11 points off leaders Bayern Munich and four points off second place Borussia Dortmund. Now, Kai Havertz was, of course, once again the headline from this game. A quiet match overall, had just one shot, but he scored the only goal of the game with it. That's his sixth in his last five Bundesliga appearances. He's also got one assist in that time and his 11th league strike of the season. In fact, that puts him on a career tally of 35 goals in the division. The only player to hit that number before the age of 21 and just seven away from entering Leverkusen's top 10 Bundesliga scorers of all time, which is pretty incredible, really. Um, obviously, Havertz is, is right now probably the most coveted mm. player, Jadon Sancho aside, in the Bundesliga. I'd say his form has firmly put him in the shop window. This weekend, Bayern Deputy Chairman Uli Hoeneß confirmed that the Giants would like to sign him, but he was a little bit sceptical of whether they'd be able to do that deal. While Marker claimed that Real Madrid actually were intending to move for him this summer, but might have to wait a year given the financial situation. Meanwhile, here in the UK, the Daily Mail and the Mirror are claiming that Man United are the front runners for his signature and are prepared to lodge a £50 million bid, though I'm not entirely sure that that will get the deal done. However, aside from his contribution and the rumours swirling around him, it was a little bit of a drab game, wasn't it, Chris? Yeah, I think I enjoyed the result more so than the performance, actually, because it keeps the top of the Bundesliga ultra competitive, doesn't it? Like you said, a little bit drab. At times, there are only 16 shots in total, actually, with XG standing at 0.69 for Freiburg and only 0.39 for Leverkusen, which is not the Leverkusen we've become accustomed to Rough. since Petter Bosch arrived, right? Um, having averaged 15 shots a game this season, Leverkusen have now just produced 16 in their last two matches combined. So a bit of cause for concern in the final third. Um, which is traditionally where they've been absolutely fine. Um, aside from Havertz, we don't want to just talk about him, do we? We want to bring something new to the table. Voice broke a little bit then. Uh, another youngster did impress in the form of 17-year-old Florian Wurtz. Am I pronouncing that right? Wurtz. Yes. Spot on. What a way to start the day. Um, so he was only making his third Bundesliga appearance. He came on in the 84th minute. And in just six minutes, got off a shot, created a chance and completed four dribbles. One of my favourite cameo performances of the season so far. Really, really fun. Um, Freiburg, meanwhile, not great for them. Uh, without a win in four, so they've drawn two and lost two. But still have a little bit left to play for, I guess. Sitting in eighth, so 11 points off relegation. So that seems safe. Uh, 17 off a guaranteed Europa League spot. So an outside shot for a uh, Europa League second round qualification uh, place. Leverkusen, on the other hand, sitting pretty in fourth, a point off Leipzig now. And how much have we hyped up Leipzig and said they're potential pretenders to the throne? Uh, Leverkusen only a point behind. Of course, Leipzig do play tonight, so they do have a game in hand uh, and they'll be be desperate to win that to secure UCL football, won't they? And fend off the advances of Petter Bosch's men. Uh, next up, um, I think Bayern Munich uh, at the weekend uh, for Leverkusen. And Leverkusen have won the last two games between the clubs. So if they 
If they do that this time, I think they'll be doing the title race a favour, won't they? They'll be spicing it up uh, for all of us neutrals uh, because Bayern are just so, so dominant at the moment. No point even putting them in our winners despite crushing the opposition 5-0. Uh, another couple of goals from Lewandowski in that tie as well. Um, Leverkusen, do you think this is their, their ceiling, Pat, where they currently sit? Um, no, not really, because they've got such a young team and I'm not sure anyone's going to offer them enough money this summer to take Bailey, Diaby, um, Folland, uh, Havertz off them. Mm. So I think they'll probably be able to keep everyone together and grow a little bit next year. And this year it kind of took them until after Christmas, certainly for Havertz to come into form, right? Nobody's scored, been involved in as many goals as him, uh, since the turn of the year. Um... So next season, if he can kind of start that form earlier on, then I think there'll be a better shot. Because right now, they've only scored, I think, 54 goals in the league. By comparison, Bayern have scored 86. You know, Leipzig and Dortmund are both over 70. Um, so they are quite a way off the top of the table when it comes to goal scoring. I think their goal difference is plus 18. Bayern's is like plus 58. <laughs> so I think that next season, if they're going to try and ride the attack to you know, a place in the top four, it's going to need to get going early on. So I think there is, there's scope for improvement. Um, but I think it's going to, it's going to hinge around keeping that front line together. Yeah, for sure. This summer will be extremely interesting at Leverkusen. Right, let's move on to our losers this week then. Just before we get into our losers, a quick reminder that if you're not subscribed to the channel, you should go and subscribe now. Hit that notification bell and you'll never miss one of our videos. And Chris... We've got Wolfsburg in the losers this week. What happened to them? Because they were coming into this game on such a high. Yeah, exactly. Which is sort of one of the reasons I included them uh, as our losers. They lost 2-1 at home to a struggling Eintracht Frankfurt side uh, at the Volkswagen Arena. Meaning that they're now tied in seventh place with Hoffenheim on points. I think they have a superior goal difference. Um, but... Just to explain, just to give some context, um, in the bully, fifth and sixth get automatic qualification place is for the Europa League, while seventh place goes in at the second qualifying round, which could subsequently mean six more games uh, next season uh, in order to qualify for the group stage. So a loss like this, if Wolfsburg, you know, have those European aspirations, could have big consequences. In truth, it was a fairly even game. It's fairly entertaining as well, actually. Um, and the home side actually shaded XG on 2.1 to 1.95. So it was that close. It could have gone either way. But Wolfsburg, probably a little bit annoyed to come out with it without even a point. Um, and the XG largely unsurprising, given that Oliver Glasner's side outshot the visitors on 19 to 7, with four of them on target to Eintracht Frankfurt's three. And they weren't necessarily pot shots either. Uh, 14 of them arrived inside the area. Six were blocked by defenders. Uh, Eintracht Frankfurt's rear guard really put in a heroic shift, which you're going to touch upon in a second. Uh, and Kevin Trapp uh, kept out a further three. So there were moments when they really laid siege to the Frankfurt goal. Um, but their attacking woes continue. Now, 27-year-old, six foot four, Wout Weghorst who we've mentioned on the Extra Time podcast before, uh, continues to struggle as the lone front man in, in Glasner's 4-4-1-1. Um, I mean, despite taking four shots in this game, I think two or three of which are in one sequence, um, that's a sizable increase on his 2.8 per 90 that he averages uh, normally, that he's averaged across the course of a season. Uh, he still, despite those four shots, uh, drew a blank in this game and remains without a goal in nine games now in total. Um, so he really needs to get going again um, in order to for Wolfsburg to pick up to, to maintain some form. Uh, there were some bright sparks though. Uh, the ever-dependable Max Arnold created Wolfsburg's goal with another deft free kick that was flicked on by right back and Babu. That was his eighth assist of the season. Uh, I think that is a team high. I'm pretty sure it's twice as much as, as the next as the next highest amount in in the Wolfsburg ranks. Um, however, I'd say probably in this fixture it was 21 year old uh, Josip Brekalo that was a uh, Divulf standout player with four chances created, four dribbles completed, uh, four shots, 
although he was dispossessed four times as well in that attacking midfield role. Uh, he was a real nuisance and was perhaps a little bit unfortunate not to come away with a goal contribution. But um, Eintracht needed this in a big way. Yeah, well, they were coming into this match already on the back foot. I mean, Adi Hutter hasn't won in four games against Wolfsburg. Um, they hadn't won in their previous five games overall. They'd shipped 18 goals in that time. They were slipping down the, the Bundesliga table. Um, but fortunately, this win puts them up to 12th, just five points uh, away from the relegation playoffs, but clearly with a big advantage over those teams below them. However, it did require a little bit of luck. They got a penalty, which was won and converted by Andre Silva in the 26th minute. That was his seventh goal of the season. But between then and the 73rd minute, they didn't have a shot on target. Mm. Um, so it was really them coming on strong at the end that managed to get them back into this. They were in a kind of conservative setup in this game. It was a 3-4-3. And really, the outstanding performances came defensively rather than attack. Martin Hinteregger, who's been very good, uh, completed a team high five tackles. Sebastian Rorda and Dominic Kaur completed 10 defensive actions between them. Kostic and Chandler in the wing back positions got nine mm. between them. Um, so it was very, very grindy. And even then, they allowed two XG against them. But in the end, they were able to find a little bit of quality that, that made the difference. Kamada got an 84th minute goal to put them ahead. Um, and he and Andre Silva coming into form might give Huta a little bit of hope that they can push on in the last few games of the season. Because I think we can all agree they've been a little bit unlucky to find themselves as low down as they are. But a disappointing campaign following the highs of last season. But nonetheless, they maybe not our winners this week, given the quality of the performances around the league, but certainly good enough to put Wolfsburg in our losers. Rounding off the show then, as always, it's our star of the week. And you've probably guessed already that it's Jadon Sancho. Couldn't really be anyone else, could it, in this match week. Registering his first ever career hat-trick and his first start since the Bundesliga restarted. Obviously, playing a huge part in Dortmund's battering of poor Paderborn 6-1 away from home. Um, subsequently, the winger is now the second highest scoring Englishman in Europe's top five leagues and is four clear in the assist chart. So he's on 16. Trent Alexander-Arnold, who's having an amazing season by all accounts, on 12. Um, so it just gives you, you know, another a little gentle reminder of the levels of the output that Jadon Sancho is achieving right now. Uh, his 33 goal contributions uh, in the league is also a first in Bundesliga history. He's the first player to register 15 goals and 15 assists in a single campaign since Opta began gathering data in that league. So, safe to say, Pat, he's played a huge part in the 80 goals scored by Dortmund so far, which is just too shy of their record. Hopefully, Lucy and Favre's men, you know, if they don't win the league, at least get an accolade as such to reflect the great attacking football they've been playing. Uh, and you wrote a scout report not long ago, actually, on Jaden Sancho and his meteoric output, didn't you, and his meteoric rise. Do you think he is going to be the heir to Messi's throne? Uh, it depends what you mean. As the best kind of, as the best all-round forward in the world, it certainly looks that way. Like he's an amazing creator, he's an amazing dribbler, he's also a good goal scorer. Uh, do I think he'll hit that level? Probably not. Like just because I, it's hard to imagine anybody hitting that level. Um, and he is playing a little bit above himself at the moment. I mean, like, pretty much everything he hits is going in. And that's great. Like, his finishing's really good. But in this game, like, 1.2 XG, three goals. That's an example of excellent finishing. But you wouldn't necessarily expect that to last in, in the long term. So I think we, we would expect in the next couple of years that his XG will start to get into these kind of stratospheric levels, the Mbappe, the Messi region. Um, but for the time being, I mean... It's almost it's almost a cheat code having him in the side. You know, in the absence of Haaland, they really did need him to step up. He was playing behind uh, Torgan Azar, who was playing as a centre forward in this game. And he looked a little bit rusty against Bayern, against Schalke. But here, he hit his average for the season so far of three dribbles a game. He created five chances, put all three of his shots on target. And um, he's just a sensational player. And then at the end, it was really lovely as well to see... Um, 
An important touch with his celebration, he revealed his Justice for George Floyd tribute underneath his top, which is also something that Marcus Taram did in uh, Borussia Mönchengladbach's game. So that's certainly something that, that we were pleased to see, I think. Um, yeah, so a very good weekend for him, uh, showing both that he can perform at the highest level and that he also knows what matters beyond the field. Yeah, and anyone telling footballers to, to stick just to football, um, we invite you to unsubscribe from this channel um, because we do not value your opinion. And that is ERU for another week. Not long until the Premier League and La Liga return. So we'll be discussing more than one league and getting you involved again in choosing our winners and losers. I imagine it will be an amped up script uh, before too long with two, two winners, two losers uh, and a star of the week to boot. Um, have we got anything to plug, Pat? Uh, there's obviously the podcast, which is out usually on a Tuesday. This week, it will feature Dave Jackson and Henry Hill as we talk about the return of the Premier League. And also Vincent Company's claim that Virgil van Dijk is the best defender in Premier League history. We debate that a little bit. Lovely, lovely. I look forward to it. All right. Bye, guys.